Thanks for joining us on FinPod and our latest edition of What's New at CFI, where we bring you insights from our latest courses and behind the scenes conversations with subject matter experts. Get ahead and stay ahead with the latest from CFI. Hello, and welcome to the What's New at CFI podcast. I'm Jeff Schmidt. I'm Vice President of Financial Modeling at CFI, and I'm joined by Ryan Spindelow, Senior Vice President of Training and Curriculum. How are you today? Hey, Jeff. I'm doing really, really well. Thanks. How are you? I'm great. Brilliant. Absolutely great. Yep. <laughs> Lo- love to talk about uh, our, our courses. Got a good course to talk about too today. Yeah. So uh, there's a, a course, I guess it's technically a, a refresh course, uh, Math for Finance Professionals. So financial math, that that's a pretty broad topic. So th- what are you covering in this course and 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 what's and why what's the underlying rationale behind creating this course and this refresh course those are some really really great questions jeff so um what are we covering in this course well we start the course by exploring uh the concepts of simple and compound interest and even though simple mm-hmm. interest isn't used a lot in finance it's a really great place to start just thinking about things like present values future values uh, the time value of money, but also um, opening up Excel and, and get it, rolling up our sleeves and doing some calculations in Excel. We move very quickly to compounding interest, which is found um, much more widely um, across all areas of finance. Uh, once we've introduced compound interest, we then um, use that knowledge to talk about discounted cash flows. Um, you know, the, the, you know, as someone that's you know been one of the driving forces behind our FMVA program, you'll appreciate as much as anybody how widely applied the DCF framework is across all all areas of finance. Um, so we look at discounted cash flows. Uh, we look at discounted cash flows um, over annual periods, over monthly periods, and we use that framework and we apply that framework to a number of real world finance scenarios. So whether it be some loan examples, uh, whether it be uh, mortgage examples, uh, whether it be looking at some net present value and IRR calculations, or we also actually spend some time pricing some um, simple bonds as well. Um, so, so we look at some really wide ranging applications of DCF and, and again, we use Excel um, to, to solve these, these real world problems. Um, and then the final part of the course, uh, the final chapter, is we introduce some really important statistical concepts that um, people in various roles in finance um, find um, will hopefully find really, really useful. So uh, we look at um, arithmetic versus geometric means. Uh, we look at the normal distribution, and we use that normal distribution to calculate some some probabilities uh, and what have you. So, um, oh, and, and really importantly, we we look at standard deviations as well. Um, so at a, at a, at a, you know, a really high level, that's the kind of stuff that we're covering. Awesome. Sounds chock full of information. Uh, so why is it important for finance professionals to, to have a, this foundation in the concepts in this course? It's a, it's a, it's a really great question. Uh, and it doesn't really matter what role you find yourself in in finance or what role you aspire to be in in finance, um, almost all roles will have some element of financial maths. And depending on what role you're looking at, um, you could need quite a deep knowledge and understanding of different financial math um, concepts and and techniques. So financial math really provides both the tools and the techniques that finance professionals need to make informed decisions. Uh, so whether it be uh, evaluating things like investment opportunities, uh, so valuing a company, for example, um, whether it or maybe investing in a, in a stock or a bond, uh, whether it's to use uh, financial math to assess risks, so standard deviations or, or value at risk of various investments or uh, opportunities in the capital markets, uh, determine the fair value of a company. Um, from a wealth management perspective, uh, working out the risk of a portfolio, from a commercial banking perspective, trying to price a mortgage. It's just found across all areas of finance, regardless of the role. And so 
um, for our CFI learners, if you think if you look at um, our, our different specialisations and certifications, you'll find that a, a, a certain level of financial maths will be really, really, in some instances, crucial, and in other instances, really beneficial to help them be successful in whatever um, course of study that, that, that they've chosen. I think that's a, a really great point. This doesn't just apply to one certification or uh, specialization. It apply, uh, you know, it applies to basically everything that we have. Yeah, that, that's right, and that's why you, you know, if you're an FMVA learner, um, if you're a CMSA learner, or if you're um, taking our wealth management certification, mm -hmm. you'll find that this course is one of the recommended prep courses because um, it's such foundational knowledge, and so. Particularly if you're new to finance, maybe you're coming from a different career that hasn't relied on math so much, or maybe it's been a while since you've taken some math courses at at, um, at school or at university or at college. This is a really, really highly recommended prep course for, for CFI learners. Are there any specific tools that you use in this course? Again, Jeff, that's, a, that's another really, really great question. Um, in this course, we rely a lot on Excel. So um, Excel is that kind of, uh, regardless of what role you find yourself in as a finance professional, you're probably going to find yourself spending a lot of time in Excel. So in all those chapters that we outlined at the start of this podcast, um, simple compound interest, DCF, DCF applications, bond pricing, um, and uh, statistical measures for uh, that's often used in, or found in finance, we use Excel um, in, in all of those chapters to solve problems, um, to calculate various um, fair values of financial instruments, um, to calculate probabilities, um, to find future and present values. And, and we'll often make use of inbuilt Excel functions, um, like PMT functions, FE, PV functions, normal distribution functions. Um, but often also we'll just use the actual math behind some of the frameworks that we're looking at to calculate the answers there. And we'll often sense check them against each other as well. So we might find um, uh, the net present value of an investment by actually calculating discounted cash flows and finding their present mm -hmm. values. Then we'll sense check that across the NPV function. And what why that's really, really useful is that sometimes functions don't quite work like you expect them to, and the NPV is a really, really good example of that. Yeah. Um, and so doing it the long way, then comparing it to the actual function means that students get a, a really, really robust understanding of how functions work and, and um, you know, the, the particular way that they work. Yeah, that's a really great, really great point about the NPV function. There's some limitations with it, and I'm glad you mentioned that as a longtime Excel user, the NPV has caused headaches. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. Um, I can imagine. Definitely understand that. Um, is, anything else you'd like to talk about with this course? No, as, as I said, I just think um, it's, it's a really, really foundational course mm -hmm. that you'll find across a lot of our certifications and specializations. Uh, it, it might be um, that you have a, a really good understanding of financial math, but it still might be worth doing this prep course mm -hmm. just to get the Excel practice as well before you dive into some of the core subjects of maybe the FMVA or or CMCA, uh, CMSA, I beg your pardon. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's very, very practical. Uh, so one of the reasons why we've done the refresh is, is just to embed a few, uh, just to make sure that like all of our CFI courses, we're making it as, as practical, as, as hands-on and, and as engaging as, as possible, really. Excellent. Excellent. Thank, thanks, thank you for joining me uh, uh, for this podcast. So you know, really looking forward to, to the course. No worries at all, Jeff. I can't wait for you to take it and give me some of your feedback. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. FinPod is brought to you by Corporate Finance Institute, the number one rated online provider of finance and banking training, certifications, and productivity tools.